Hello and thank you so much for joining us for this week's episode of the program. It's Spot Pizza where you get the absolute best in the ever exciting world of sports. My name is Brownson Wanaya, your host, and of course I must tell you that the program today is well loaded for your viewing pleasure. Now, English football returns this weekend after um, the world was brought to a standstill um, last Thursday after the announcement of the passing on of the Queen of England, Queen Elizabeth II. And of course, football activity was suspended for last weekend, but this weekend, uh, football returns again. And of course, for all those that missed the English Premier League uh, football game last week, there's something to smile about. Now, Sport Minister also last week did something, uh, I want to say most sport journalists criticized when it first happened, this banning the league management company, LMC, um, declaring it an illegal uh, company to run Nigerian, um, Nigerian Professional Football League. But how well can this one go? We're talking about the new committee that will run the league, but of course we'll give you details of that on the program. Lots of things to talk about, but first let's take a very quick break. When we come back, we'll serve you all the details. Don't go away. All right, welcome back. My strike partner, Lakuli Philip, joins me at this time. Kuli, good to have you on the program today. Yeah, top of the day to you, Brass. Good to be here. Yeah, right. Now, I mean, world of sports never go to bed. Every week, every minute, things keep breaking. And of course, right here on the program, we take our time to analyze and um, give you informed decision and information on this program. Now, let's start with the disbandment, or will I say sacking? Or the um, illegality <laughs> as claimed by the Minister of Sports on the league management company. When, when this announcement was made some 10 years ago, uh, I remember I had some spot pundits who spoke about it, and then um, a senior colleague called us at that time and said that we should be careful the way we criticize the league management company. But it took, um, I think, for one, two, three ministers to come and then see through our eyes what we were complaining about, the legality of the league management company running a legitimate league in the country. But, I mean, it has finally happened and um, they've declared it illegal. What's your take on this? When you look at all this criticism, all these aspersions that has been thrown on, on, on the LMC, you will discover that there is uh, some atom of fact some of the things it is done. Why would you allow just one uh, company to run the affairs of the LMC for so much, for for such a very long time, and you have some. The, I mean, the head of different clubs not even getting to know anything about how the affairs of the LMC is being run. So I think that uh, the decision by the by the federal government to actually ban this ban sack the LMC is a welcome development. Though when the news actually crept in, a lot of people said ah, it was a wrong one because remember what happened with the uh, the, the basketball federation and one of the reasons when 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 the sport ministry I think for the first time we are having a sport minister who understands uh, the, the I mean well, sports, sports yes generally and, and I think that his understanding has actually been playing out. We've had a lot of controversies in the past. We look at what happened with basketball then and he actually came in and you know though what he did at that time didn't really favor us because we remember that um, the d Tigress will not be playing, participating in the World Cup. Their position was taken by Mali. But I think for those that are tussling for, for, for power, mm. those that are fighting over leadership in, in, the, in the Nigerian Basketball Federation will now begin to sing a news because they know that if they do something unworthily again, uh, they, they will have the, the, the uh, a sport minister who understands and who can actually deal can with take the situation. Action. Take action. Mm. So I think that also with the LMC, this man led by Sheo Diko has been giving free, too much free hand uh, to operate. And Brownson, when you look at the affairs, that is why it is expedient that the sport ministry with the federal government take this drastic decision, sack them, and we're going to be having an interim uh, committee editing the affairs of, of the league. A league, uh, in the last few years, do I say for almost 8 to 10 years now, has been stagnant. I think, do I, do I have to say stagnant? It's been, it's been retrogressing. Hmm. There's not been any form of progression uh, because you look at it, everything is just the same. There's no new thing, no, no, no fresh ideas. And these men are just sitting down. Also, going about indulging in some illegality. So I think for me, it's actually spot on. Maybe by now, uh, we'll have some genuine individuals 
who have the interest of the country at heart, who <laughs> understands the ground of that game, who knows how to make... When you look at the Ghanaian the, 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 the Ghanaian league, the money in there is huge. I can't remember the figure right now. It, it compared I mean, to... Talking about figure, I mean, in Nigeria, can, can you remember the last time they, they even declared it, it, what comes into yeah, the league? They don't declare. No, don't they forget, don't declare. Don't forget that. Even the, the club owners are not aware. Now, uh, the surprising thing for me is the fact that um, in the interim committee that was set up by the minister, you know, Shodiko was also included in that committee. Um, and, and impending when, you know, another one will be set up. And then, um, clearly, it, it's so sad. Uh, I, I mean, you, you said it all. Uh, because if you look at our league, we've not moved forward. Is the same thing now. Last season, the leagues commenced and we were playing um, Saturday, Wednesday, Saturday, Sunday, Wednesday. You know, just rush the league as it stands now. We don't know when the league is resuming. Now, the plan, like they always do, the number be to rush the league Saturday, Wednesday, Sunday, Saturday, Wednesday. And now, the national league is as good as dead because sometimes we don't hear anything about the national league. Absolutely. Now, um, the, 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 the women league is, is really struggling, struggling. and you, you, you agree that this is one of the reasons why the Super Falcons, the Falconets, the Flamingos are suffering. Because we don't have a proper... Okay, we just want to excuse that. Okay, maybe it's not the league management. But, I mean, it, it's the, the, the whole league thing cut across. Yeah, it cuts across. I think uh, uh, when, as long as, um, as passions goes to the league management company board has just been recently dissolved, the Nigerian Women League also, uh, the board led by Asha Falodi, also deserve some slaps because I think, for as far as I'm concerned, they also have not been doing well. If they have challenges, if they have issues, they should come out and people will understand. But for right now, the Nigerian Women League also has been retrogressing. Look at what happened with the, 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 the Women's Champions League last season. No one would have ever imagined that the Nigerian team will be beating the way River Rivers United <laughs> were taken to the cleaners by some of these clubs. I think mm. you went, when you play against a Moroccan team and a Moroccan team beats you, you can imagine since the inception. Person, I'm saying this based on what I see with other foreign countries. England we used to be, sorry that I'm, uh, I'm digressing mm. a little mm. bit, the English women team used to be at par with the Super Falcons. I think about 10 15 years ago, the English team we played against them, we battled, I think the game ended in a draw. But presently, as we speak, the English women's team are high above the Super Falcons. Same with Canada, who were also at par with us. It shows that, the, in, as far as management is concerned, as far as putting up good structure is concerned in Nigeria, we have found one thing. So, I think that uh, the, 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 the LMC, the bank, is justified. Then the women league as well. It needs total restructuring. Hmm. Probably, uh, you know, when we have the new uh, individual personnel and then the Nigerian Football Federation and then there's going to be election and all of that, we can have new set of people running the affair, the total affairs of Nigerian football. What else can I say? Uh, we can only hope that um, some of these decisions taken by the minister in a very short while will begin to heal big result. Now, the international break is just around the corner, uh, maybe in one, two weeks' time. Uh, it will be time for, uh, for teams that have qualified to World Cup to start build up games. And, of course, European, uh, European uh, Nations League also around the corner. But, Kule, as, as we're heading to international break, some of our players are doing well, some are getting even more injured. For instance, Victor Moses, um, uh, Victor Simen, Simen. I beg your pardon, sure. was missing last weekend. Yeah. And then we also have Calvin Bassi, uh, who was substituted uh, from, you know, uh, from, with the IF team last weekend. Uh, yes, uh, we, can, we have to move on because <laughs> there's nothing we can do about that. Like you said, Calvin Bassi substituted in the 86 minutes in their game, uh, you know, last week. And, but the coach came out to say that um, it's just a minor uh, injury that is going to be back. And also, uh, we have Victor Simen also, who will be out for one month. It's a very sad one. Uh, because when we remember what happened as well last season, one of the reasons why he didn't score as much as 20 goals in the league was because of the long injury mm -hmm. uh, he had. But um, we still have some other players who are, are doing well for their club. We have Ademola, uh, Lukman, putting up good performances, and decent 
uh, performances week in week out for um, in the colors of Atalanta. We have Sevilla Dessa. Uh, yes, Dessa has not been able to score any goal uh, this season so far. Mm. But we have uh, uh, oh, David Okereke who already bad two goals and those two goals are actually spectacular goals. Not forgetting uh, Sadiq Umar as well. These players are they are they are playing well. They are not doing badly. I, I watched uh, Sadiq Umar play play in the Europa League against Manchester United. Though they they were not feeling him well with the ball, but I was happy that he was on the winning side because <laughs> <laughs> when when you go to the theatre there and you you not you you you, you get a win mm. over there for a club not. As I mean, that big and you know, beating Manchester United at home is is a good one, and that will also uh, boost his career as a player because I think he has not had it so good uh, for years uh, since he started playing the round leather game. This is just the time uh, that he's just beginning to pick and uh, get his rhythm, and we hope that all Nigerian players will uh, be injury free. As we come down to the some of the friendly guys, the games we're going to play, we're going to play. We're just, 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 just going to help some of these nations prepare for World Cup. Yeah, the Portugal, we're going to help them prepare. It's also an opportunity to test. I uh, might know that we're just going to be sitting idle, not uh, doing anything. But oh. uh, I think that uh, uh, as years goes by, we've got quality players. Uh, in the Nigerian food right now, it's just sad. But ta- ta- uh, remember what the movie said. Your man said. So your man said. They, they should challenge the energy that Nigeria will not be playing at the World Cup. They should channel the energy to Afcon qualifiers and probably get to win it. I think for me that would be a better compensation for us. At this point, let's take a very quick break. We'll be back with more stories. Don't go away. Welcome back. Now, talking about the World Cup, um, some countries are trying to host the World Cup by all means. Now, we are very used and conversant to two countries hosting the World Cup. But this time around, um, maybe a step further to have three nations host the World Cup will boost the economy and um, maybe the social life of these other three countries. But FIFA, uh, I've tried lots of things. Football has even come to Africa. So, I mean, what's top three nations from hosting the World Cup? Now, countries like Egypt, Greece, Saudi Arabia, miles apart, are seeing how they can host the World Cup. For instance, we can't, you, you can play, um, Nigeria can play a quarterfinal in Egypt and play the semifinal games in Saudi Arabia and maybe the final in Greece. How yeah. about that, Kuli? Yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be a very interesting one. I think the, the, the gap, the, the, uh, the, the relationship uh, between these countries will be stronger and also uh, much better. So if this eventually, like you said, FIFA has tried a lot, a lot of, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, they, 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 they've, they've tried a lot of things. Trying With the World Cup. The World Cup yeah. I mean, for the uh, first time, for instance, this year, sorry for um, breaking you there. For the first time in football history this year, we're playing World Cup in November. <laughs> I mean, so that's to tell you how, I mean, what FIFA has done, how, how flexible they could be sometimes, could be, yeah. uh, I mean, to, to host the World Cup in the Middle East. So, I, I mean, I, I think this could be open for um, discussion and the possibility of this one for me looks very good. Yeah, the fact that we are going to have one African team also being a part of it is for me is a welcome development. I'll be very happy if this is like the light of the day because when you see an African, we are Africans and possibly if the if Nigeria qualifies and some other African teams, we can get massive um, support. Our games could be in, South, in Saudi Arabia, yeah, for some, instance. Yeah, some could be in Saudi Arabia. <laughs> <laughs> we're just hoping that you know, we are closer. <laughs> we're playing in Egypt and okay. probably we get all the support and which will actually help us to go all the way in the World Cup. All right, by the way, um, Nigeria to Egypt is six hours flight. So it's not as close as Kunle said. Uh, if you are going to the UK, think about six hours as well. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so, we know they are, they are Africans. We are Africans. Yes. So it makes it easier. You know, you can compare. We, when you talk about England, the English knows that they are English. They are English. And we are Africans, so okay. it's this, the, the discrepancy is having, having it played in our continent. And in our continent, that's yeah. what I'm talking about. Exactly. That, that's... That, that will play a very prominent role. You probably <laughs> see Africa going as far as the semi-final. All right. I mean, in South Africa, it was a different ball game. <laughs> Let's hope that if this one sees the light of the day, it will be different. Now, football returns back. Um, in England this weekend. Now, it was a shocking moment to the world last week when, um, I mean, the news of the demise of the Queen of England was announced. And, um, I mean, 
for Europa League teams like Manchester United, they didn't have much choice. Uh, the news broke that day, they had to go on with their games. But every other game in England, including the weekend games, were cancelled. But, of course, um, games will return again this weekend. Now, there have been lots of talks. You know, uh, Manchester United fans, Arsenal fans, West Ham fans have claimed that the, clean, the Queen supported one of these clubs. Uh, I mean, some Man U fan, even in the studio, are saying the Queen was a Man U fan. And uh, of course, but report said uh, that she followed Arsenal, Arsenal and West Ham. Yeah, I love that because when, <laughs> when, you, when, you, when you look at the team mm. that, have, they, that have actually gone to see uh, the Queen at the Buckingham uh, Palace, you will agree with me that I think it's only been England, uh, uh, Arsenal. Though there are some other clubs who have also gone to visit uh, the Queen at the Buckingham Palace, but uh, uh, there's this speculation that the Queen, I mean, the Queen supported Arsenal, supported. Uh, Liverpool supported Western United and also Arsenal, so uh, it's it's a good one. Maybe, maybe, maybe we can say the Queen supported all the teams in England. No, no, just supported all the teams in England. I, I, I can assure you. Supported all the teams think, in England. In, I think I, she has this soft spot for for the Lon the London clubs. Okay. Yeah, if you if you look at the clubs we've mentioned, I think about two of them are, are from from London. Mm. Talking about West Ham. And, and Arsenal. I'm no. talking about the, the team that, that, that probably brings pride back to um, England. You have to give it to Liverpool because um, when you talk of European football, they have showed their class. I'm, I'm surprised Chelsea is not mentioned in this list because, uh, no, I mean, Brunson, during the time... Brunson, no, no, no. no. Europe, when, when, in, in terms of European football, in terms of European football, Chelsea have, bring, have brought glory to the English football, to Brunson, England. Brunson, when, than Arsenal. When, 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 when she was... Um, when she ascended into the throne uh, many years ago, over uh, 70, about 70 years ago, uh, when you look at the teams on, in, the, on the, in the English Premier League table, Arsenal were number one. I think Manchester United was in the, in the fourth or fifth position. Liverpool were down. We had some teams like Crew, and we had some teams like Nottingham Forest and all of them. Chelsea were... Uh, it was, I think they were number eight or number nine. So, uh, come on. Why, why would you support a club in, in that position? Time has passed and time has changed. Uh, look at it. Someone said the Queen, when she ascended into the throne, she, uh, Arsenal were the number one team. They were the leading team in England. They were, I think, on the table, they were top. And now that she has demised, she has passed on. As yeah, Arsenal also, the, uh, you know, top of the table. So All right. Give it up for Arsenal, Browns. I can only hope that um, <laughs> that top of the table results to EPL title this year. I think that's the only thing that would make sense uh, for that. But of course, <clears throat> our heart is with the people of England uh, in this very difficult moment, and uh, we hope that um, football that we love will return back again uh, this weekend. Now, let's move on from that, Kunle. Now, there was a big story again last week. Uh, before the big one that happened last Thursday. Now, that has to do with the sacking of Chelsea manager Thomas Tuchel. Now, after he lost uh, the UEFA Champions League game. Now, for me, the season is still fresh and new players were just brought in. Most people thought that that sacking was, uh, you know, probably pr premature. Uh, well, uh, that's left for the, the American owner to actually decide. But really... I think uh, it's it's absolutely it's an absolute injustice uh, for Thomas Tuchel because uh, he hasn't done badly and the league has just started. You, you lost the game, yes, fine. He lost that game in the UEFA Champions League, but that is not the end. He still doesn't say that uh, he will not be qualifying into the next round of the UEFA Champions League. So I think that was too hasty. That was too. That was that was that that, that shouldn't have, that have happened at this time uh, because there's still time for. The, the, the coach to rejuvenate and you know get the back the team back to reckoning. So I think sacking him, you also have to consider the fact that this man was brought into free, won the UEFA Champions League with, with Chelsea. We had some coaches who were actually available uh, to, to be picked up, to be to to to, to be selected. You have, we have, have, we have oh, Zinedine. Zinedine. Oh, Zidane still yeah, available. He, okay. He's available, but they opted for uh, Potter. I think that in terms of experience, he doesn't have it. And it reminds me of uh, uh, some, some coaches like uh, Brendan Rogers, who were who was brought in at that time uh, for, for Liverpool. To Liverpool, yeah. yeah. To Liverpool. I remember David Moyes was brought in from Everton to succeed David uh, to succeed Salis Ferguson at Manchester United. And what 
contract for the third world fully. I think there should be a level you, you, you have to pass through the ranks, not jumping the gun. That's, that's the way I say things. You can't really blame Porter right now. You blame the management, but then uh, football is absolutely unpredictable. We hope that Porter will be able to perform for, for him. But and then for, deliver the but title. Nothing, but but, but <laughs> I think it's a very big disappointment uh, that um, the, the kind of treatment that was meant out to Tukel was injustice. But one of the things they also talked about, Brassing, is the fact that when they were trying to make the signing of, uh, uh, of Cristiano Ronaldo from Manchester United to see the light of the day, he didn't support that. He didn't want uh, Cristiano Ronaldo, or probably he, he just didn't like That's Thomas, Tuchel. Uh, uh, Thomas Tuchel to have him in, 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 in Chelsea. So I think that really played out. They were looking at the, the management talking about, and also the American owner were looking at the monetary aspect, the financial aspect, where they can make proceeds. Football is in, business in, in, sometimes. In it's business. In For instance, Ronaldo. Ronaldo's shirt should, uh, would have, his replica would have you know, would have written the same amount you signed him in hours. Yeah, absolutely. In yeah. hours. I think that... that and that they brought in an Aubameyang. They bought an injured Aubameyang. Aubameyang. Who, can, who cannot play, though? Who cannot play until... Uh, permit me to say, Chris, uh, you know, uh, uh, Pierre Emerick Aubameyang is a spent force. I, I hope that he's able to convince me that Chelsea actually make the right decision uh, by securing the services. But really, I don't see that happening. All right. That's what it is. Uh, you know, sometimes you know you have to take this decision, whether good or bad. Sometimes it's like gambling. You you win some, you lose some. Let's see if this gamble uh, that Chelsea is taking on their new manager would pay off. Let's take another break over back. Don't go away. Welcome back. Now let's talk about other sports. This year's US Open was always going to be a game of the newbies. Well, maybe not new in tennis, but of course, fresh as in the women's side. Uh, the top guns were also knocked out <laughs> from the main angle. Now, Ivan, uh, what's her name again? Iga Swate kept a dominant season by beating Tunisia's fifth seed on Jeboa at the US Open to win her second major title in 2022. Now, Poland Swiatek, 21, wow, just 21 year old, won 6 2 7 6 7 5 to secure the season's final Grand Slam trophy, um, of course, in the hard court. Kule. I think for me, the, 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 the most important part of this, uh, of course, is the fact that an African got to the final of this year's um, US Open. Yeah, I think I feel very happy. I feel very excited. There was a time we had uh, that it is South African in the male, uh, the male part of the of, of tennis. Uh, but uh, the, I think Anderson Johnson or something. I can't really uh, you know get the name at this time. But it's good that we have a female uh, African uh, from Tunisia playing in the final. Of the U.S. Open, uh, I think this is a very is a welcome development. Sad that she actually lost to Iga. Iga is an household name. Uh, despite uh, her age, she's won six titles uh, at this time, winning. This is her second a second major second major title in twenty twenty two. The year twenty twenty two. So she's she's actually uh, justified if she actually loses to to Iga. She's fifth uh, seeded. So uh, it's a good one for. Iga and also for for Jibua, I think uh, this will actually spot her on uh, to go all the way in other major tournaments. I'll be very happy. I'll be very glad if an African player gets to win major titles in uh, in the in the game of tennis. All right, let's see how well that goes. I think for me this is a big one for African sports. Uh, but I mean we're celebrating Tunisia today. I uh, hope that someday Nigerian will also get into the Grand Slam. Let's even say Nigerian in group phase. <laughs> 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 let's let Nigeria like play the group phase, and uh, I mean, we used to have uh, one particular person, Ladipo, I think over 15 years ago, and then uh, it was actually dominant in the African continent. And could it sometimes when you go to national stadium and see players that are hungry to oh, learn? Yeah. Uh, but of course, you know, sometimes when we, I think I spoke, I spoke with a lady some two years ago, and uh, she said the biggest problem they have is that the federation does not, you know, take them to tournament. All these, uh, and, and the all these, federation will tell you they all these don't have points, the finances. All these points, them. points breaking tournament that will help that them get the seedings, yeah. you know, but it's, it's sad, but I mean, it's a discussion for another day. Meanwhile, Red Bulls, Max Verstappen inflicted a home defeat on Charles Delic and the Ferrari in the Italian Grand Prix to continue his cruise to a second world title. What a move that was. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much, Alakune Philip, for, yeah, thank you very for much doing for this with us here. today on the program. Yeah. All right. 
All right, with that, it's our final whistle on the program today. Thank you so much for being a part of it. Now, don't forget to keep those emails coming. Uh, for some of those guys that sent us email last week, thank you very much. Now, that's the email address on your TV screen. Keep those emails coming. It's, we, we, we feel really good reading your emails. Now, don't forget to follow us on other social media platforms displaying on your screen right now. Also, go to our YouTube channel. It's Spot Pizza. Don't forget to subscribe. My name is Brownson Uwana. Thank you so much for watching. Let's do this again next week.